So my colleague uh, Shayna Saroshek at Ina Farber uh, is leading a study uh, combining acalabrutinib, which is a second generation BTK inhibitor, with uh, rituximab or a biosimilar in patients with anti-MAG neuropathy. Uh, neuropathy is actually a condition that affects about 25% of patients uh, with Waldenstrom's and with IgM uh, gamopathies, and is very difficult to treat. I think it's difficult to treat because uh, I don't think it's diagnosed appropriately. Uh, we do not know what treatments are best. We do not know when to start treatment because these uh, neuropathies progress very slowly and sometimes it's hard to identify what is the best timing to treat these patients. We do not know how to measure the response to therapies because there's a lot of different neurological assessment tools that are not done by the hematologist but by the neurologist and, and none of them have been formally validated in this type of neuropathy. So this study uh, is actually the only study evaluating a treatment on patients with antimatic neuropathy in the world at this time. We're trying to understand, number one, you know, it, it's, uh, if, if it's a good timing, what is the best timing to treat patients, if the treatment actually works for these patients, and how we can assess the response, not only from the blood side of things, but also from the neurological side of things, which I think is the most important aspect. So we presented our, our experience in eight out of the 30 patients that we have enrolled so far on this study. These patients get a calabrutinib daily, and they get rituximab four weekly infusions in month one and month four. Um, and so far what we have seen is that uh, there is actually some improvement on these patients in terms of the neuropathy. The study was trying to look at the fact that if we start patients on therapy, uh, you know, if it's at least half of these patients should have either stability or improvement in their neuropathy over time. And that's what we are seeing, actually. Uh, we saw that over 75% of patients actually are benefiting so far from these treatments. Obviously, it's still very early on, uh, but I think it's encouraging to see that we can actually induce some neurological improvement on these patients who, if we don't intervene or we don't provide you know, good treatments, these patients do become disabled over time. So I think it's an important study, and we will look forward to continue and complete accrual and, and provide some more advanced data later on.